piano. Hey, you know what time it is. Welcome everyone to another episode of The Beatdown, the segment and channel where two worlds collide. I am your host, Flash, and if you guys enjoy our content, you know what you can do. You can share, you can like, or you can subscribe to our channel. All right, and on today's episode, in honor of, you know, the announcement that the Blue Beetle is coming live action, we decided we're going to do a Blue Beetle episode. So, we're going to start things off, or I'm going to start things off, by representing DC Comics, Jaime Reyes, aka The Blue Beetle. Okay, now normally I would explain brief origin stories and powers, abilities, and feats, but since I've already explained it in the previous pass, I figured why not just let previous class explain those abilities. Into the origin story, or brief origin story, shall we? All right, so. Jaime Reyes, aka the Blue Beetle. Uh, let's talk about where the Blue the Beetle came from first. It's an alien uh, scarab. Okay, so in the beginning, aliens were conquering worlds by using the scarab to go out and uh, you know attach itself to a host, and then they would use the host to destroy the planet. And while the host had to witness the whole thing, I couldn't do anything about it, as the scarab was actually controlling its body and being able to use it to attack and destroy the whole planet. And then, I, so yeah, pretty much that's what the scarab did. Uh, one day, one of the scarabs was flying into space, and then it got uh, pushed off course thanks to a green lantern and it la crash landed in America or I don't know if it landed on America but it landed on our planet and it wound up landing in a pyramid and it stayed there for a while until mankind discovered it and then from there on it was centuries of battles between several tribes that knew the technology was like some kind of special thing so they knew they had to have it so it was like a century of battles present day two assassins slash thieves are fighting in a warehouse in America uh, to trying to get the scarab and take it with them in a backpack and they're trying to claim it one of them is trying to claim it and then as uh, as this is going on Jaime is to a party and as this happens they happen to be there driving off and then out of nowhere these two assassins take the fight outside and in the crossfires is uh, Jaime and if his brother from being you know, assassinated because obviously one of the assassins threatened them. Uh, he decided to uh, think on his feet quickly. He noticed that they were fighting over this backpack, grabbed the backpack, and ran off with it. He figured he sacrificed him. So one of these, uh, they start chasing Jaime, and they throw one of the assassins throws a blade at him, hits him in the back. Now, tragically, uh, Jaime doesn't know what he got himself into because inside the backpack was the scarab, and the scarab once it got hit with that blade in the back. What do you call it? It, used, it started uh, activating its defense mode and attaching itself into the back of the spine of Jaime, becoming the Blue Beetle. And that is the brief origin story of the Blue Beetle. As far as abilities and feats, let's get into it guys. This is going to be a long one. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to see if I can read this as fast as possible. Tracking systems. The suit can track any forms of energy, biological, magic, or technology. Scarab sites. The scarab that can track anyone Jaime has encountered and search for anything concealing itself, even if they are in other dimensions. He was able to see someone who uses tachyon energy to make himself invisible by shifting between space-time. It can also determine a person's condition such as pregnancy interesting symbiotic telepathic communication Jaime and the scarab can communicate but the scarab talks in its own language superhuman strength estimate of baseline enhanced strength capacity roughly five tons lifting slash carrying capacity superhuman agility armor resilience partial armor manifestation shape shifting the scarab is capable of total or partially covering the form of orbits where it is either instance the wear still has full access to the scarab's function array. When the scarab's armor fully covers the wearer, it also provides a limited shape-shifting ability, as seen when the wearer's, when the wearer's arms Hands become complex weapon systems. Dual purpose wings. The wings could act as a shield, but have changed to be more translucent. Uh, flight mode. The scarab is capable of subliminal uh, flight velocity and can enter subspace, but it 
was told that entering subspace travel would annihilate him. Uh, what I call it battle analysis, adaptation, vibrational frequency manipulation. He was able to was able was capable of touching someone moving at a different vibrational frequency. Weapons array. The Scarab has hundreds of different weapons configurations that it is that it can instantly make available to the wearer, from clubs, blades, and grappling spikes to sonic blasts, ion cannons, and antimatter blasters. The Scarab can instantly regenerate and provide a tool for almost any need that arises. Translation: It can understand most languages. In known the universe in, in the known universe sorry waste disposal it is able to yada yada anyway healing factor capable of healing himself after Maxwell Lord shot him in the head so there's that and now let's talk about some of the feats okay was able to get himself out of Gigantus closed fist or closed hand uh, what do you call it uh, can take blows from Lobo be uh, at multiple places at once with his speed able to stand nuclear explosions his shield is strong enough to block attacks from a speed forcer speed force uh, yeah, Speed Forcer. Sorry, I guess said that right. I guess he can produce nukes. He can take a. He took on Guy Gardner's Green Lantern with five Sinestro rings powering Starro. Beetle was able to take him on. Fought a being known as Omac Prime, who was possessed the powers of heroes such as Wonder Woman. And when trying to absorb his suit's power, it was too much for Omac power to handle. Omac Prime to handle. Sorry, able to absorb the energy powers of device known as the World Ripper which has the power to destroy planets, can produce tachyons to prevent time traveling. That is impressive. All right guys, so let's get into the end game. Now with Blue Beetle's highly advanced alien technology, let's make the argument. Okay, so let's make the real argument. Uh, do we think as human society that we have more superior technology than alien life forms from another planet? Absolutely not. They can go into hyperdrive, they can fly, they can maneuver with gravity or maneuver gravity or control gravity. There's a lot of things where actual aliens can do compared to what we can do. So do I think that the alien technology, the argument to be said for alien technology for blue beetles is much more superior than Iron Man's suit? I do believe so. If Iron Man only brings his you know, nanotechnology suit and doesn't bring any other suits and it's just him and blue beetle going against each other, outside of the vacuum of space i do believe blue beetle is going to have way more of an advantage because his alien technology has learned to discover way more in the database of tech of the universe i mean he's gone to different solar systems he's conquered different planets so the scarab has obviously learned vast knowledge more than tony has tony has obviously learned probably the surface of certain things that alien technology can do but as far as a scarab that has gone and traveled across the universe i do believe the scarab's technology is going to be much more superior than tony's technology and at some point, it could overpower or overwhelm Tony's technology uh, during a fight. The argument to be said is that, uh, well, a few things. One, uh, Blue Beetle could probably replicate Iron Man's suit. So it can go evenly matched with Iron Man's suit. Considering the fact that it can replicate Kryptonite, it could probably could replicate that as well during a certain situation in a fight against Tony Stark. Let's not forget that the Blue Beetle's uh, armor isn't really that easy to pierce. There's not a lot of things that can defeat the Blue Beetle's armor technology. Um, only Green Lanterns are known to be able to take on a Scarab or a Blue Beetle character. So unless Tony has a Green Lantern ring lying around or has a friend who's a Green Lantern and part of the Green Lantern Corps, he doesn't really stand a chance against Blue Beetle with his technology or his armored suit. But now another thing to be said is also that Blue Beetle has... Uh, so there's this thing about EMPM, EMPs I think it's called, it's like an electric pulse. Um, so they say that, oh, Tony's probably found a way around that. Well, that's not true. Tony can't, is a certain amount, I'm sure he's had certain, he has certain things and certain technical traps or certain precautions to keep him from getting uh, caught up in that situation. But with enough juice and enough power, that's a different argument. If, let's say Blue Beetle decides to harness enough EMP to to take out Tony enough maybe to from a planet or another planet two planets three planets or one planet alone If he can manage to shoot an EMP at Tony I don't believe Tony no matter whatever he has as a preparation for that is going to be able to over or handle that much power coming at him which could overwhelm his system and either fry him or take him out of his systems and that would give I would say Blue Beetle an advantage to either uh, get Tony exposed or to be able to beat on him while his uh, systems are completely offline. And the last point I make is that Blue Beetle will obviously take the fight to another world compared to leaving it Earth because obviously with Earth, Tony has much more of an advantage, a home field advantage with all his tech there. Take Blue Beetle somewhere with Tony, 
put him in an environment he's not familiar with, places that Scarab has been where he is adaptable, where Tony would be much more difficult for his suit to be able to adapt to, and the Scarab could find an exposed weakness, open and take advantage of it, and put Tony down for the count, leaving Blue Beetle with the victory on this one. And now I'll be representing from Marvel Comics, Tony Stark, AKA Iron Man. Initiating the Mark VI. We've already explained the origins and the powers abilities of Feast's character has proven in the past. We're going to just have you watch a previous video explaining all that. Here you go, Mr. J. Tony. Tony was a prodigy early on in mechanical engineer. 21, he took over his dad's company after his parents had passed in a car accident. And he took the corp, he took it and he made it into a giant global corporation wildly successful during testing of for new technology tony was injured a piece of shrapnel had entered his heart so there's a little inconsistencies in in some of his background you know there's uh there's times where this had taken place in vietnam there's times where i believe it had taken place in afghanistan or iraq so the area of which this happened sometimes has changed i believe once or twice but nevertheless he was being he was captured he was forced to work on terrorist missiles or weapons or die that's the choice he was given uh, he chose another option he made his Iron Man suit that we all know and he escaped and that is the brief origin of Iron Man list his powers and abilities first and then his feats I'm gonna name his feats first that way I can kind of you know tell you his equipment and then I'll kind of get into how I believe he might win this fight. So, feats he actually has a lot of. He was trained by Captain America, Black Widow, and Shang-Chi. Wow. Survived a blow from Thor. Woo! Founding member of the Avengers and the Illuminati. Took down World Breaker Hulk. Wow, he's a founding member, that's crazy. Now, just so I can make my point clear, this wasn't the regular Hulk that we all know. No, this was World War Hulk or World, World Breaker Hulk. Meaning Hulk steps outside and the world is gone, like destroyed, like massive earthquake. Turns into a powder. Yeah, like nothing. <laughs> and Tony was able to take him down. First human being to wield the Infinity Gauntlet. Defeated Magneto. You know Magneto, the guy that controls metal? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. And he's like Omega level. You know? Omega level. We're gonna, we gotta do one about him because he is yeah, well, he's a boss, bro. Waged civil wars against Captain America and Captain Marvel. Has claimed to have beaten Reed Richards in chess five times. <laughs> and Reed Richards, it's the smartest man in the universe. In the universe. Okay? <laughs> Made the Sentry bleed. If you, any of you don't know who the Sentry is, Sentry is another Superman ripoff or yeah. alternate. He is Marvel's version of Superman. Well, one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I would say Hyperion is a little more similar, but yeah, Sentry does have like that junior Superman. Superman. Like he's super clone, super boy clone or something. Yeah. Let's go with that. <laughs> he has survived nuclear explosions at only 2% power. Woo! Two percent. Think about your phone. You wouldn't survive an explosion in two percent. He has created a suit out of the escape. If any of you don't know what the escape is, it is basically a virtual reality or a virtual universe that Tony created to where he can create anything in this universe. Any. The only limit is his imagination. Wow. That is the limit of this universe. And Tony made a suit out of it. Wow. <laughs> Created a genetic clone of Thor. Shattered the Phoenix Force. Defeated Ultron, Mandarin, Korvac, and Thanos. 
He shattered the Phoenix Force. That's no joke. The yeah. cosmic universe being that could exist in any other reality yeah. or yeah. any other universe. Let, let, let that one wrap around. That's, let that while. one sink in for a second. You know, let's sit on that for a moment. All right. <laughs> now I'm gonna get into his rather than powers and abilities. We're gonna get into the equipment or his suits, rather. Standard on all suits, by the standard way. Standard on all suits, by the way. An EMP, flight, super strength, repulsive blast, an AI companion being whether it be Jarvis or Friday. And by the way, these AI companions, they can hack into pretty much anything. I think they've also been known to hack into alien technology, which we'll play into later. Anti-tank missiles, unit beam, and smart missiles. All right, so the end game for Tony Stark, aka Iron Man. Now, obviously Tony's got to keep the home field advantage to Earth. As long as he keeps the Scarab from leaving Earth, which he can use multiple armor suits to keep uh, guard of him being able to escape, there is that advantage there. And let's not forget, I do believe that Tony's suit is a lot faster than Blue Beetle's suit. I'm sure Blue Beetle's suit is impressively fast, but Tony's suit has got to be probably beyond faster than that. So. If Tony needed to fight Blue Beetle and he needed to catch his breath, he could just run away from him for a little bit, catch his breath for a moment before Blue Beetle could find him and then go back at it again with him. So there is the argument to say that Tony can breathe a little bit better and has a lot more faster pace and there's no way Blue Beetle would be able to catch him with a blitz move in any kind of way. Now maybe the Scarab is intellectually smart itself, but so is Tony's AI artificial intelligence. It's also very intelligent, which also means that it can pinpoint and figure out weaknesses or learn maneuvers against opponents. So it'd just be a back and forth intellectual game fighting. And also with Tony on your side, also another brilliant person with an AI working together, it kind of says more. Jaime is a kid, so I feel like they would work more compatibly than, uh, than the Scarab and Jaime would because obviously he's still a kid, so he's very still uninformed about things in life compared to Tony's brilliance. Do believe the AI and Tony would be able to come up with a formulated plan to be able to take on the Scarab mano a mano or be able to pinpoint a weakness to put it down. Now, um, I do believe Tony's suits can pack a punch, so there is to be an argument to be said that he has other weapons out there besides his suit. He could just use, I think he invented a device that can shoot from the planet or from space and shoot down. I'm not sure if he did. I think he might have. I think it might be a god killer weapon or something like that. But this thing could blast someone and put you out for the count. I do believe Tony invented that. And if Tony did invent that, there is a possibility to be using that against the Blue Beetle. Another thing is, is that Tony Iron Man suit has that unit beam that could really put a pack of punch and put you down for the count if you need to. Now, here's another fun, here's a fun fact. Scarabs, the Scarab is, um, is a fan of mother nature. It loves every living thing or creature besides humans. So if Tony were to learn about that, if the AI were to discover that about the alien technology or during a fight, let's say it doesn't harm a tree or a flower in a moment while they're fighting, Tony could pick up on that, then put all these plants all over himself. Now, that's where it gets interesting. The Scarab doesn't fight uh, living things like plants or other things like whales or animals or something like that. So if Tony puts anything to cover himself, it would put the Scarab at a very disadvantage because he won't fight. He doesn't fight anything that's not not human. He'll fight everything else, but he won't fight nature. So, yeah, I do believe that if Tony covers himself with some plants and stuff, uh, he could put Blue Beetle's uh, suit down for the count. He could beat him up and do all he wants nonstop, and Blue Beetle wouldn't do a damn thing about it. But like I said, Tony's just with the AI in his hands, along with his, his intelligence, I do believe they could pinpoint a weakness. They could use the plant life or living life of uh, from Mother Nature uh, to cover himself, to take advantage of the Scarab's uh, weakness for loving things like that. Uh, they could find a weakness. They could, they're all, Tony Stark is a brilliant man. He's fought many other far more stronger beings out there like Thanos and stuff. So I do believe that given enough time in a battlefield with Blue Beetle, he will eventually figure out a way to put Blue Beetle out for the count, leaving Iron Man with the victory. And as always, no purse fam, it's not up to me. It's up to you guys. If you guys like either one of my arguments, you know what you can do? You can hashtag Iron Man. Or if you like the other more argument, you know what you can do? You can hashtag Blue Beetle. And as always, no purse fam, we really appreciate you guys. Catch you guys later. Peace.